Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to my channel. I also wanted to welcome all of my brand new subscribers and anyone who's randomly coming across this video. It's so great to have you guys. So for today's video, what we're going to be doing is going over how to take care of feeders for your lizard. So let's get to it. So I broke this video down into two sections, which is number one, the basics. And these are literally the basic fundamentals of what you need to know to take care of all the feeders as a whole. And then the second one will be the specific Specifics where I break it down for each bug that I use. So for the basics, the first one is they obviously need a food source. Now with that being said, each bug is different, but generally they need scraps of salad, whether it's carrots, stuff that your lizard eats out of their salad. If they are a lizard that doesn't eat salad, then feed them things like collard greens, bok choy, mustard greens, cucumbers, oats, fruit, etc. Bugs also need to be gut loaded. And if you have no idea what gut loading is, this is the basic definition right here. Basically, the general idea is that you are what you eat, so you need to make sure that you give the bugs that your lizard is eating nutrition and the proper diet. So you have to take care of the bugs as well. Bugs also need a water source, whether that is given from their salad scraps, either cucumbers, carrots, stuff like that that are high in water content, or water crystals. Sometimes people use sponges, they use water cubes, some people use something called crick cricket quencher. Depending on the bug, some work better than others, but I always use the water crystals just for all of them, and some bugs don't will not eat the water crystals and they just get their water from their foods. Next, they also of course need a place to live. So you need to have some sort of containment area for them because you don't want them hopping all around your house, do you know? Because I know I wouldn't. But generally, I use the just regular Cricut carrier bins that you can get at pet stores or I'll use the containers they come in depending on what type of bug it is. And then that brings us to the last thing for the basics and that is that you need to maintain their living area. So you need to clean the bin that they're in and this should be done at least once a week every two weeks depending on how many bugs you have in one area sometimes letting it soak with hot water will help break up whatever stuff is stuck to the bottom dawn dish soap is great for this disinfectant wipes i also use sometimes for really big bins where i can't put it on a tub and scrub it also a scrub brush and a scraper work really well too for some of those bins usually the only time i have to use a scraper is for cricket bins Ah. Alrighty guys, so that brings us to section two, which are the specifics. And I'm going to go down and break down each bug specifically that I use. And I'll be covering crickets, superworms, waxworms, BSFL, roaches, and hornworms. Alrighty, so for crickets, they need a, of course, a container. I usually use the cricket carriers, depending on how many I get will be a bigger container or smaller container. They need a lot of jumping space, so they need a bunch of of egg crate otherwise they're going to jump and just pummel each other and this also allows them to be away from each other and aerate they need to be in a place where there is a lot of aeration now that does not mean outside because having bugs outside can actually let a lot of other unwanted things in and infect your bugs but having them in a room with lots of airflow and good air conditioning is a really good idea because if not when each of the crickets die they actually let off this gas that kills the other bugs and it's that weird nasty fishy disgusting smell that you'll get with crickets that's that gas that they let off when they die and it's just well you also need to make sure that food is in there at all times for crickets because even though you feed them they will still eat each other i mean that's just happens regardless so make sure there is a lot of food so that will happen a lot less you need to make sure that they also have a lot of either water crystals cricket quencher or bug gel i only use the water crystals i don't use any of the cricket quencher bug gel none of that i also make sure that i gut load them as well and put any extra salad scraps from the lizards in there sometimes i'll start them off at the beginning of the day with some collard greens it'll usually be gone by the end of the day and when it comes to egg crate for them you don't have to use egg crate for my container 
container I just used ripped up pieces of cardboard and it works just fine. I do also want to mention that with crickets I don't get them a lot because they are more prone than any other bug with getting parasites, specifically pinworms. So that's just a little tip and something to keep in mind for you. That brings us to superworms. Now with this one this is a treat not a staple because of the hard shell it is hard for bearded dragons to digest them. So for these guys you just need a simple flat storage container or container with oatmeal or some sort of substrate in it. That's the general setup for them and they're also really easy to breed. They turn into beetles and they need a specific source of bran flakes to really um, help with breeding and to get them healthy and like the best nutrition. But they will also eat salad scraps. They love collard greens like they will eat some collard greens okay. <laughs> they also love carrots, bran flakes, oatmeal, salad scraps. And generally they'll eat that. They will not eat water crystals though so all of their water content they're getting from their food so you need to give stuff with high water content. Now something to keep in mind with these guys is they will actually eat through their bedding if you give them bedding and just be slithering through their poo so you do need to switch out the bedding a lot. And another thing to note is that these guys will actually pupate really 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 easily if you give them a dark secluded space as well. Next are roaches. This is my favorite feeder to feed. Honestly one of the most nutritious ones as well. Now these guys are super easy to keep. You just need a general cricket carrier will work. You can also have a big bin as well like I have. I have a rack system and a huge bin because I breed them. So they need a bunch of egg crate. They need water crystals, food scraps, anything from salads to bug chow. They need gut load. You can also feed oatmeal. These these guys will not eat each other as long as you give them a food source and their water crystals. They're also honestly really really clean creatures and I know that sounds weird I know because they're roaches and whatever but they're honestly really clean creatures if you allow them to be. So as long as you keep up with their cleaning the bins once a week and everything they're actually very clean. And that brings us to BSFL which stands for black soldier fly larva. Now these go by many different names whether it's phoenix worms, nutri grub, um, I'm not sure on the other ones but uh, they turn into flies really creepy looking flies mind you but flies these are full of calcium you don't have to dust these at all when you feed them I also don't gut load these at all because they are full of calcium within themselves I also don't give them water crystals I just keep them in the little container that they come in now I do want to mention that these bugs are great for compost bins. They are actually composting bugs, which means that they eat rotting things and turn it into soil, compost. So they will eat any type of fruit, veggie, salad, any of that. I mean, they'll also eat more than that, but you don't want to feed them anything that your lizard can't eat. So you can either keep them in their little container or you can put them in a bin and just watch watch them do their thing. I mean, throw some food in there and watch them do their magic. These can also be stored in the fridge for longer shelf life. It slows them down and puts them into a hibernation state, basically. So all you would need to do is take them out, let them thaw, and then feed them after that. But I generally just keep them out and they'll last about a week. Next are hornworms. These are the big fluffy blue worms and these turn into moths. These guys grow super super quickly but a small fact about them is they will only grow as long as you feed them. But besides that these are really easy to keep. You usually get them in a little cup with a bunch of the grub for them. Also if you don't have that they love 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 butternut squash. You can feed that and they'll be just fine. With that chow it actually makes them very nutritious so you don't have to gut load them. And then lastly that brings us to waxworms. Now waxworms do not last long at all. These are something that are of course only a treat but these are something that should be fed quickly if you're going to get a tub of them because they either die quickly or they turn quickly. So because they die quickly I just keep them in the cup they come in and just feed them off quickly. I don't gut load them, none of that. These are merely just a treat. That is how I take care of the waxworms. Alrighty you guys, so that's all I have for you on that topic, but stay tuned to the end for bloopers and extra lizard footage. I wanted to just mention real quickly that if you didn't already know, I do have a brand new Caribbean scented all natural lizard soap. This is sold on my website in many different scents right now, though I will say that when I launched it actually this Monday, they started selling like crazy and I only have a few scents left. So there's a few of each 
each, maybe four of each scent left. So get these now while you can. It lasts a while. It's all natural. And just a reminder that on the website, I also have my Bearded Dragon activity book available as well with a bunch of different little lizard learning activities and things you can do with your child or where your child can learn on their own with a bunch of information on the back as well. I also, of course, have cute little things like stickers and other little things you can check out on the website. So www.lizardguru.com for all of those. Also, I have a P.O. box, so if you want to send me anything at all, send it right here and I will get it and write you back. Whew! With that being said, I hope you like this video, share this video, subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the notification bell for this channel and my second channel, Alex's Random Entertainment, where it is not lizard related, nor is it child friendly. It has adult content that is animated or live video, so just keep that in mind if you check it out. I also do not have a lizard of the week this week, but if you would like to be the lizard of the week next week, be sure to send those photos of your lizard to my social media account and I will have one up next week, I promise. Alrighty, you guys. So, as always, from my family to yours, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. But first, enjoy some extra lizard footage and bloopers. Mwah. sound all right let's do that again bugs also need to be gut loaded and if you have no idea what goat lo go lo